Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at Section 1031 Exchanges. Section 1031 Exchanges falls under the concept of the third gains and the third losses, something that I covered briefly in the prior session. So if you're not sure what a deferred gain, what's a realized gain is, please look at the prior session. But now we need to discuss what is the idea of Section 1031 exchanges, which is part of this concept of deferred gain and deferred losses. So what's the big idea? Think about a company that owns a building and they want to update this building. They want to sell and update to a new building. So they want to go, go ahead and buy this building. So what can they do? Well, one option is they can sell this building and let's assume they can sell this building for the sake of illustration for a million dollar. Let's make it five. Let's assume they can sell this building for five million. That's the amount realized minus the adjusted basis and the adjusted basis for this building, let's assume is three million. So the adjusted basis is three they would realize a gain of 2 million. This is the realized gain. Now from this realized gain, if they did indeed sell it, let's assume they're gonna have to pay for simplicity 20% 20, 20 in taxes. They're gonna have to send the government a $400,000 a tax bill for selling this building. Well, they're gonna take this money and buy this building. Well, hold on a second. Let's see what happened here. They sold the building, but what they really did, they replaced their building. Let's assume they bought this building, I don't know, for $8 million or whatever amount they bought it for. It doesn't really matter the amount that they bought the building. But the point is they sold the building and they purchased the building. So the, the Congress says, look, this transaction does not warrant that you pay taxes if this is what you are doing. However, why don't you do a 1031 exchange? Basically exchange this building for this building. In this way, your gain, rather than realized, it will be deferred. So that's the idea of Section 1031 exchange. You defer your gain by doing what? By doing an exchange, replacing your building with a new building. So the transaction would look as an exchange, not would look as a sale. And simply put, you did not sell this building, you did not sell this building, and you deposited that money in your account, or you would, you would draw this money from the company and you use it for personal use. What you did is, you sold the building and you, re you replace it. Therefore, you don't have the ability to pay taxes because you, you use those funds. So based on that logic, Section 1031 comes into the picture where you don't have to pay taxes on that gain. You will have to defer this gain. So that's the basic idea. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now here's what you have to understand. A non-recognition treatment for gain and losses is granted for qualified like-kind exchanges. Now we are not going to go into the nitty gritty of what's considered like-kind exchange, but on the CPA exam and your accounting course on in the enrolled agent exam, they will tell you this is a qualified like-kind exchange. Basically, simply put, for example, if you have a building, if you exchange it for a warehouse, they're pretty flexible. Now, bear in mind, a qualified like-kind exchange, we need to know what type of properties we, we are dealing with. We are dealing with real properties. Real properties means real building, land, something that's attached to the land. It's not only has to be real, it has to be used for trade or a business or held for production of income or held for investment. So this real property, it has to be used in business. It cannot be personal use property. It cannot be personal properties. Remember, we have personal properties and personal use property. The asset exchange must be like kind in nature or character and must serve as a replacement property. So remember, the idea is you sold the old building to replace it with a new building. Again, it doesn't have to be building. It could be a warehouse. That's fine as well. So personal properties like furniture, computer, desks, those, they don't qualify. 
even if they are used in a business, they don't qualify. Personal use property, obviously they don't qualify, including personal use property, including real personal use property, even if you have a land for personal use, a building for personal use in a house that doesn't qualify. Inventories don't qualify, securities, partnership interests that don't qualify for this type of exchange. So let's kind of zoom in. We are dealing with real properties and those real properties are used in a business or held for production of income or as an investment. Those are the assets that qualify under section 1031. In a like kind exchange, the taxpayer relative economic position changes in form, but not in substance. And this is this is the whole idea is, yes, you did sell a building, buy a building, but your economic position did not change. You still have a building. It's a new building. Nevertheless, it's a building. In fact, the newly acquired asset is considered a continuation of the taxpayer's old investment. So that's why we don't make you pay taxes on the gain in an exchange like this. An exchange transaction that qualify for the like-kind exchange generally produce beneficial consequences to the taxpayer. However, it's not tax-free transaction. Realized gain and losses are deferred. It means they are pushed forward to a future period unless the taxpayer receive, receives boot. Now, on the exchange, sometimes you might receive a boot. What is a boot? A boot when the other party... Remember, those the two parties that are exchanging, they have to be equal. So sometimes to equalize the deal, the other party might have to pay you cash or give you some boot like stocks or something in, in addition to the cash, in addition to the property to equalize the deal. Under those circumstances, if you receive a boot, the boot might be taxable and we would look at the formula for that taxable amount. Always remember that the deferred gain and losses are subsequently recognized when the property is disposed of in a taxable transaction. And we're going to see how the concept of that deferral. Let's take a look at this simple example to illustrate the overall concept. Under a non-taxable exchange, NIA exchange a building with an adjusted basis of 150 with a fair value of 195. So the fair value that she gave up was 195 the adjusted basis of that property was 150 and she exchanges for a land for 195 remember exchange must be equal so if i gave up 195 if nia gave up 195 she expect to receive in return 195 of value which she did now in her exchange nia realized a $45,000 gain because the the building was 195 fair value adjusted basis 150 the difference is 45 if she we assume that if she sold it she would realize so the realized gain is equal to 45 now since she sold the building and bought another real property for business then the gain the $45,000 gain will be deferred will be deferred deferred means we're going to see what does it mean later it means it's not taxed taxed now it will be taxed later so remember in any transaction the fair market value of the asset given should equal to the fair market value of the asset received or asset or assets received because the assumption is we are dealing with two rational individual two rational parties so if i give up 195 i expect to receive in return 195 just keep that in mind as we're going through this now let's take a look at when the boot is involved Taxpayer are required to recognize a gain in a transaction that qualify under like-kind exchange treatment if they receive a boot. So the first thing I want you to understand is if you receive a boot, not if you pay a boot. And think of boot for now. Just think of it as cash, but it, it can be other than cash. It can be cash, securities, inventory, anything that you give to equalize the deal. Boot as defined any property involved in the exchange other than the like-kind exchange. It can be cash. It could be net debt relief, simply somebody pay, taking over your debt. That's basically giving you money or other non-qualified property. In general, the receipt of a boot, not the payment, triggers a gain recognition. Now, how much is the gain when boot is involved? So we have to know, okay, we're going to have a gain, but it, it doesn't mean the whole gain will be real, uh, realized. Let, let's see. The gain will be the lesser of the gain realized or 
the fair value of the boot received. So after you compute the gain, you're going to have to look at the gain and compare it to the gain realized and the fair value of the boot received. And the lower of these two amount, one or two, the lower of these two is the amount that's going to be taxable. Losses are deferred even when boot is received. For losses, it does not matter. For losses, you defer them. You defer them for later. So remember, we're only dealing with gains. An exception applies when the boot consists of non-qualified property other than cash, in which case the giver of the boot may recognize a gain or a loss on the exchange for the difference between the boot, property fair value, and its adjusted basis. And we'll work an example. Okay? So, bear in mind, if you're exchanging something other than the non-qualified property, for example, securities, inventory, something other than the Section 1031 assets, and you're exchanging it, it's as if you sold it, got the cash, and paid the cash. So if you exchange it, you might have to recognize a gain or a loss because it's basically, it's a separate transaction. Gains or losses on an unlike kind property are not allowed to be deferred. And don't worry, we will work an example about this. So we'll work an example showing you this. Let's take a look at examples with boot received. In a transaction that qualifies for like-kind exchange treatment under Section 1031, Emily exchanged a building with an adjusted basis of 100, fair value of 210. So the fair value is 210, the adjusted basis of 150. If she sold this building, she would have a, a realized gain of 60. And she exchanged it for a parcel of land with a value of 195. Well, that's not enough because I gave up something that's worth 210. In addition, Emily received $15,000 in cash. So the other party gave her the land, but that's not enough because that will not equal to 210. She gave up 210, plus they gave her 15,000 in cash. Now we have what we called boot received, but at least we see that the exchange is equal. What is the amount of the gain or the loss that Emily should recognize in this exchange of this transaction? Well, let's first take a look at the realized. Emily realized $60,000 of gains, and I showed you how. What's the difference between 210 and 150? Given that she received $15,000 in cash, which is a boot, she is required to recognize the lesser of 60,000 or 15. Well, it's either the gain or the boot received the lesser of these two the lesser of these two is 15 therefore 15000 is is realized realized so simply put of the 15 of the 60000 15000 is taxable now is realized and the remainder 45 is deferred deferred for later so the 45000 is deferred until emily sells that land into the future in the future Assume that Emily exchanged a building with an adjusted basis of 200 and fair value of 210. Now, changing the scenario a little bit. For a land that's valued of 180 and received cash of 30,000. Now, again, what we're doing now is we are assuming the fair value is 210. The basis is 200, so we have 10,000 of gain. The land that she received is 80 plus 30,000 in cash. What's the amount of the gain or the loss? that she recognized on this exchange. Let's go through it again. The realized is 10,000 and she received, so the realized gain is 10,000, which is the difference between 210 and 200. And the boot that she received in the exchange is 30,000. Okay, now what do we have to do? As a result, we will choose the lesser of realized gain and boot. The realized gain is 10,000 is the lower of the two. Let's take a look at another example. Assume that Emily exchanged a building with an adjusted basis of 200 and a fair market value of 190. Well, what does that mean? Is if we take, so the, the fair market value is 190, the adjusted basis is 200,000. If she sells this building, she would experience a loss. Now she exchanges for a land valued at 185 and received cash of 5,000. So we did receive a boot. What is the amount of gain or loss? We already know that we have a loss of 10,000 from the exchange realized loss, computed as the difference between 190 and 200. Also, Emily received a cash boot of 5,000 to equalize the deal because the land is worth 185. The owner of the land had to give Emily another 5,000 to come up to 190. The receipt of the boot does not trigger the recognition of a loss, so the loss would always be deferred. Remember that. As a result, Emily does not have any recognized gain or loss. The entire loss is 
postponed until the property is subsequently sold. Remember, we don't recognize a loss if we receive if we receive a boot. It doesn't matter. The loss is always deferred. Let's look at an example with boot given. Emily exchanged a building with an adjusted basis of 200 and fair value of 210 for a land that's worth 215. Now, Emily also have to pay cash because she gave up a land that's worth 210 and she received something worth 215 to equalize the deal. She's going to have to pay 5000. Now she give up 215, she received 215. What's the amount of the gain or the loss that Emily should recognize? Emily realized a gain of 10,000, which is the difference between 200,000 the fair value of the of the building and its adjusted basis. Now, Emily in this situation paid a boot paid not did not receive well therefore she does not have to recognize any gain therefore the entire amount is postponed she did not receive the cash she paid the cash so remember the boot makes a difference with the gain if the boot is received emily exchange emily exchange a building with an adjusted basis of 200 with a fair market value of 180 what do we have here we have a loss and she exchanges for a land that's worth 210. Now, Emily, she's gonna have to equalize this deal because she received a land that's worth 210. She gave up a fair value of 180. She's gonna have to come up with the difference. Uh, the difference. Emily also gave a boot with an adjusted basis of 15 and a fair value of 30. So she has to give up another 30,000, okay? So now she gave up to 210, she received 210, she's good. What is the amount of the gain or loss Emily should recognize on this exchange? Well, let's take a look at this transaction slowly. Emily would realize a net loss of 5,000 in this exchange, being the difference, first the fair market value of the asset given up. So she gave up the asset, 200,000 minus 80. I'm sorry, let's put the 180 first, not 180, not 80. So the fair value of the asset she gave up 200,000. If she sold this asset, she would realize a loss of 20,000. That's the first thing. Then she gave up another property and that property is worth 30,000 and the basis of that property is 15. So we have another transaction. 30 minus 15 would give her a gain of, so this is a gain, this is a loss. And that's why we said the net is 5,000 loss. So the net is 5,000 loss. Okay, however, just having these loss, let's go through them slowly. The net loss stems, stems from the realized loss of 20,000 on the like kind exchange and the realized loss on the boot. Okay, Emily is required to recognize the gain. So she cannot net those two out. You would say, okay, but isn't 20,000 gain, 20,000 loss minus the 15 gain? Yes, these two exist no netting you don't net them you're not allowed to net them okay so emily is required to recognize the loss on the on the boot but the further realized gain so simply put the twenty thousand loss that she realized on the land that is the third and the fifteen thousand gain is realized yes is realized now in total in total you would say it's a net realized of five thousand and loss that's realized but when it comes to recognition, 20,000 of the loss is the third. You cannot net it against the 15,000 gain that is realized. Remember what I told you earlier. I told you if the asset is not a like-kind exchange, but it's part of the deal, it's a separate transaction. It's treated separately. And this is what I meant by that separate transaction. The 15,000 gain on, I don't know what she gave up. She gave up some boot, let's assume stocks that are worth 30 with an adjusted basis of 15, she's gonna have to pay taxes on those separate transaction. Just be aware of this. Basis of property received. Now we're gonna look at when you receive the property, now we understand the realized gain, realized loss, all that. Now we need to understand how do we compute the basis of the property received. So when we receive the property, the basis of the like-kind exchange received should reflect any deferred gain or deferred loss. So this is where we bury or not bury, basically defer the gain or the loss. So remember, we have a deferred gain and deferred loss, and I told you it's deferred. Deferred until when? Deferred until now. When we compute the basis, here's what's gonna happen. We're gonna look at the fair value of the property received. There are two ways to do it. First, we're gonna use the fair value method. 
we would look at the fair value of property received plus we're gonna add the loss not recognized or deferred simply put plus any deferred loss the loss that's not recognized just to kind of kind of def define it minus any gain that's not recognized which is the gain deferred simply put fair market value of the property plus loss deferred minus gain deferred i just defined it here loss not recognized as deferred kind of to remind you it's not recognized why now we have to kind of it's good to logically understand this i mean you can memorize why do we add the loss why do we subtract the gain but let me explain it to you because it's worth spending a few minutes on this just to kind of really understand it so you have no doubt when you say i am adding the loss or subtracting the gain let's assume you receive a you receive a property that's worth uh, $10,000. Okay, this is the fair market value of the property. Now, in that exchange, you had a deferred loss. And let's assume the loss was 3000 You had a deferred loss. Now, what do we do with the deferred loss? If you had a deferred loss, and you understand how we come up with the deferred loss from the prior, from the prior uh, lecture, what we did earlier, we learned how to compute the deferred loss. So we're going to take this deferred loss and add to the value of the property that we received. As a result, we're going to have basis of 13000 So the question is, why do we add the loss? How is that deferring the loss? Here's what's going to happen. In the future, what you did here is you increased your basis. So in the future, let's assume in the future, you sold this asset for 20000 Sell, sell it for 20000 in the future okay so what happened is this this 20,000 if you sold it into the future in 20,000 you compare it to the 13,000 the gain will be seven okay so what happened is this if you if you did not add the deferred loss and the basis was 10,000 which is the fair value of the asset received your gain will be 10,000 your gain will be 10,000 which is the difference between 20 and 50 20 and 10. So what happened when you added this $3,000 loss, it reduces your gain from 10 to 7. So by increasing your basis, by increasing your basis, you reduced your gain. So you accounted for that loss later when you sold this asset. Now you're saying, okay, now if I sold it again, what if I sold it at a loss? Well, if you sold this asset at a loss, let's assume you sold this asset for, uh, let's make it 6,000. If you sold this asset for 6,000 later into the future, you will compare 6 to the 13. Well, 6 to the 13 is 7. Okay? Rather than comparing 6 to the 10, if we compare it 6 to the 10, the loss will be 4. Now the loss is 7. So what you did is you recaptured that loss down the road when you sold this asset. So by deferring the loss, you increase the basis. By increasing the basis, you're either gonna reduce the gain in the future or increase your loss, which is you recapture your loss. Now, the same concept would apply if you receive an asset of fair market value of 10,000, and now we have a deferred gain of 3,000. The deferred gain of 3,000, it would reduce your basis to 7,000. So how would reducing my basis deferred my gain? Same concept in the future. If you sold this asset for 20000 in the future and your basis is 7, you have a gain of 13. Okay? Now, if you sold it for 20 and your basis was 10, your gain will be... Your gain, let's... Why am I doing losses here? So 20 minus 7, 20 minus 7 equal to 13 gain. This is so basically what happened is you recaptured that additional 3,000, 20 minus 10. If you did not reduce your basis, your gain will be 10. So what happened is the third gain was recaptured later on. So this is what we meant by this. Okay? And if you sold it at a loss, let's assume you sold it for 5,000, you compare the 5,000 to 7,000, and you only have 2,000 of losses versus if you sold it for 5 and the basis was 10, you would have a losses of five so simply put the deferred gain would increase your gain in the future or reduce your loss in the future so it doesn't go away but by burying the deferred gain and the deferred loss into the new asset it would it will be recaptured down the road 
On the other hand, the basis in the boot received is the fair value of the boot. So if you received a boot, the fair value of the boot is the basis. So if you received cash, if you received 10,000 in cash, well, the basis of the cash is 10,000. If you received the boot, the basis of that boot is the fair value of the boot. So that's separate from the like-kind exchange asset. Let's look at an example. Miriam exchange an office building she uses in her business for a land that has a fair value of 523. At the time of the exchange, the office building has an adjusted basis of 48. So the difference between 523 and 523 and 480 is her gain, is her realized gain. And a fair market. Let's take a look at an example. Miriam exchange an office building she uses in her business for a land has a fair value of 523. So she got a land with a fair value of 523. At the time of the exchange, the office has an adjusted basis of 480 and a fair value of 523. Now we know that Miriam will have a gain, a realized gain at least, 523 minus 480. Okay, let's take a look at this. Determine the amount of the gain realized and recognized. Well, let's first look at the gain. Uh, given that this is a like-kind exchange, it qualified under section 1031. The gain is the difference between 523 and 480, which is a gain of 43,000. Look, she did not receive any boot, therefore the total gain is deferred. The question is, what is her basis? What is her basis on the property? The basis on the property, remember, the fair market value of the asset received, the fair market value that the, of the asset received is 523, then we reduce it by any deferred gain, minus 43, the deferred gain. So the basis is 480. So 523 plus the deferred loss, which is zero, minus the deferred gain equal to 480. Therefore, her basis is 480. So what happened, by deferring the gain, we lowered the basis. So in the future, when we sell, when she sells this land, her basis are lower, which make her gains are higher. Or if we sell it at a loss, her losses will be smaller, which is, with, which is we recapture the gain. Now, let's take a look at another example. Assume now that the building has an adjusted basis of 480 and a fair value of 420. So what we did here, we changed the value and now we have a loss, a loss. And the land that she received is 420. But now she has a loss, Miriam has a loss because she exchanged a building that has a loss. Determine the amount of the gain uh, realized, if any, and, and the basis. Well. Actually, she received a lot. She re she realized a loss, which is 480 minus 420. Now, what are we going to do with this loss? What do we do with losses? Remember, we always defer the losses. We don't have to worry about uh, about realizing the loss because it's always deferred. The loss should be deferred. Therefore, the loss recognized is zero, and her basis will be the fair value of the asset received plus the deferred loss minus the deferred gain. We have no deferred gain. Therefore, what we did with the loss, we deferred it. And how do we defer it? We increase the basis of the asset. Let's take a look at this example. In a transaction that qualify for like-kind exchange treatment, Jane and George exchanges the following asset. Jane gave up a building with a basis of 25 and a fair market value of 120. So right there, we would say that 120 minus 25, Jane will have a realized gain, realized gain of 95. George gave up a building with a basis of 30 and a fair value of 90 and a security with a basis of 20 and a fair value of 30. Okay, so what George gave up is a building that's worth 90,000 with a basis of 30. Now we have a gain here of 60,000 on the building, but that's not enough because if George gave up only 90 and Jane gave him 120, well, he's going to have to give up something else, cash or boot, and he gave up securities with the basis of 20, fair value of, th uh, fair value of 30, basis of 20. Therefore, 30 minus 20 equal to 10. This is also realized and we immediately say this is also recognized why realized and recognized because the securities are not part of the like-kind exchange so here's what you have to understand from this transaction immediately we have 10,000 that's realized and recognized and we have 60,000 here of gain that's realized we're gonna have to find out how much of it is 
recognized or not. So make sure we are starting from this point here. Okay. Now we also have to understand for George, the basis that he gave up, what he gave up is what he gave up in total. What George gave up in total is 120, right? Which is the, let me change colors here, which is the building and the securities total of 120. He have to do this because he received a total of 120. Now, what's his basis? Well, his basis, we would say 30,000 here. And well, what's going to happen is since this amount will be realized and recognized, his basis will be the 30,000. So his total gain will be 60,000. Why? Because the basis of the securities becomes 30,000. Now we can go back and say, okay, let's assume the basis is 10 and we're going to see what would happen. Okay, but this is what we have at this point. So let me show you the figures and we would assume that the basis of the securities is 20 and we're going to get to the same answer. But let's look at this. Let's first look at Jane. Jane, fair value of property received, 90 plus, th 90 plus 30 equal to 120. And this is basically what she gave up. 120 minus her basis will give her a realized gain of 95. So for Jane, we already computed this, a realized gain of 95. She received a boot of 30,000, which is the securities. Well, how much is she going to recognize? The lesser of 95 and 30, the lesser of is 30, and she will defer 65. So of the 95,000 for Jane, she, the taxable amount right now is 30, and the deferred amount is 65,000. Now, let's look at George. We said George's fair value of the asset given up is 120 in total. And we're going to consider the basis as 30 because George paid 10,000 in taxes on the securities. Therefore, it's going to increase his basis to 30. Therefore, realized gain is 60, received no boot. There's no gain recognition. Then the deferred amount is 60. Now let's assume we, we, we did this in a different way. Let's assume we said, okay, George gave up, which is this is what we did here actually, gave up two assets. For one, he had the gain of 60,000, a realized gain. And for the other one, he had a gain of 10,000, which is realized and recognized. Simply put, if we assume that 120 and we assume the basis rather than 60, use it as 50, 120 minus 50 is 70,000. Of the 70,000, 10,000 of this gain is has to be realized because it's a non-like non kind exchange. We go back to 10,000 gains realized and 60,000 deferred. So whether you said the basis, they're not really 60, they're 50. Okay, if you want to say the basis are 50 for George, then George will have a total of 70,000 of gain, 10,000 immediately recognized, and what's left is deferred. That's basically how it works. Or you can say 120, and I'm going to assume his basis and the land is 30 and the securities is 30 because he paid the taxes. Therefore, the gain is 60. And now all of it is deferred, which is it, it, we come back to the same answer because we recognize the 10,000 separately. OK, let's go go ahead and uh, summarize this. The securities are not part of the like kind exchange. Therefore, George has to recognize the difference between 30 and 10. 30 and 20 as a gain, which is a $10,000 gain. As a result, the adjusted basis of the property given up is equal to the adjusted basis of the building, which is 30,000, plus the fair value of the securities given up, the fair value, 30,000, which is 30 plus 30 will give us the 60,000. This is just another way to look at it. Now, determine Jane and George's basis for the like-kind exchange. What is the formula? Well, the formula is this, fair value of the property received minus the deferred gain plus the deferred loss. Let's take a look at this. For Jane, fair value of property received is 90,000. That's what Jane received, fair value of property received 90,000. And the deferred gain was 65. Therefore, the basis is 25. George, the fair value of the property received is 120. The deferred gain is 60. Therefore, the basis is 60. Again, the fair value of the property received. Now you might be saying, hold on a second, didn't Jane receive the additional 30,000? Yes, she did receive the additional 30,000, but that was not part of the like-kind 
property that was not part of the like kind property. Another way to compute the basis is using the, what's called the code approach. I prefer the fair value approach, but you, I want to show you the code approach in case it's in your CPA review course or in your book. The code approach is basically starting with the basis of like kind asset given. So you start with the basis versus the fair market value approach where you start with the fair market value received. Then you add to it adjusted basis of the boost of the boot given. If you're giving, if you are giving any boot, you will add the adjusted basis. And this makes sense. If you're paying cash, it should increase your basis. If you recognize any gain in the transaction, you will increase your basis. Remember, if you recognize the gain, it means you already paid the taxes on that gain. If you paid the taxes, the amount becomes part of your basis. Remember, gain recognized is means what? It means you pay the taxes. If you pay the taxes, it should increase your basis because the basis are not taxable. The basis are already kind of, you already pay the taxes for them. So this is important to understand this. Once you pay the taxes on something that becomes part of your basis, minus fair value of boot received. So if you received any boot, obviously if you receive benefit, cash, that's gonna be reduce your basis. Less any loss, rec loss recognized. If you recognize the losses, it's going to reduce your basis because you already recognize the loss. You took the deduction. If you took the deduction, you cannot take it twice. You took the deduction. Guess what? Reduce your basis. You took the deduction. You cannot take the deduction and don't change your basis. You took the deduction. Reduce your basis. Okay. Let's go back to the example to the previous example between George and Jane and let us determine the basis and the property using the code approach. Well, Jane gave up a building with a basis of 25 and a fair value of 120. George gave up a building with a basis of 30 and a fair value of 90 and the securities with a basis of 20 and a fair value of 30. Basically the same example. Let's do Jane first. Jane recognized a gain of 30,000. If you remember the fair, va the, the lower between, remember we, we said it's, the gain was 95, the realized gain was 95, and the boot was 30, so we recognize the lower of the two, of 30,000. So let's take a look at the Jane. Using the code approach, she's gonna start with her basis. The basis of the property she gave up is 20, 25,000, so we start, we start with the basis, 25,000. Adjusted basis of boot given, Jane did not give any boot. Gain recognized. Yes, she recognized, you remember, 30,000. Since she recognized 30,000, that amount was taxable to her. Because it's taxable, it's going to increase her basis. So that's why plus recognized gain. Minus fair, fair market value of boot received. Well, the boot received is 30,000. If she recognizes the gain on it, she's going to have to deduct this. Minus any loss recognized. Loss recognized is zero. Well, her basis is... 25,000, which is back to the same formula that we worked with, gave us 25,000. So you add what the gain was recognized, then you subtract any fair market value of boot received. If you receive the boot, it should be removed from the formula. So 25,000. And notice here, we have, using the fair market value approach, we got to, how much? We got to 25,000 as well. So notice, in either way, you will get the 25,000. Now let's do the same thing but computing the basis for George using the code approach. So let's, let me go back and show you that the basis for Jane, give me one moment, please. Let's go back to that slide. I went back very far. Okay, so notice Jane is 25. Now we're gonna go back to George and recognize, uh, compute the basis of 60,000. Okay, let's, lo let's look at the code approach now for George. For George, Adjusted basis of like kind asset giving, the adjusted basis, let me just look at the numbers here. The adjusted basis, George gave up a building of 30,000. That's the adjusted basis of the like kind asset given, plus the adjusted basis of the boot giving. And he also gave a boot with an adjusted basis of 20, adjusted basis of 20. Remember, when he gave up this boot of adjusted basis of 20, the fair value of that boot was 30, 30 plus 20. Remember this triggered a gain, a gain that's realized and recognized. So there is a recognized gain of 10,000 minus fair value of boot received. George did not receive any boot minus loss recognized. George did not recognize any loss. 30 plus 20 plus 10 equal to 60. And this is the code approach. Again, the code approach and the fair, 
fair market value approach should give you the same answer, which is 60,000, and the basis for George is 60,000. So make sure you are comfortable and understand how the code approach works, because the code approach, it has more pieces, and if you understand the pieces of it, you should be in good shape. What should you do now? Whether you are a CPA, EA, or an accounting student, go to farhatlectures.com, look at additional MCQs, true false questions, that's gonna help you understand this topic better. Section 1031 exchange is an important topic on the CPA exam. You cannot go to the exam or EA exam or take an, an, a, a, an income tax course and not knowing this topic in depth. I'm always here to help you. Good luck, study hard, and stay safe.